What if you only had six months to live? Hypothetically, of course. Let's say you go to the doctors and they diagnose you with a terminal disease that will kill you in six months or less. Would you believe them? Would you live your life any different? Would you spend more time with your loved ones? Would you chase the dreams you've been procrastinating? Would you do anything? The truth is only a small percentage of people on this planet have been put in this situation. Some give up, some don't. I am blessed enough to know two individuals that didn't give up. Here is their story. Time is fragile. Time is finite. Time is precious. How we spend our time molds us to be the person we are today. Our choices make us who we are. Our mistakes make us who we are. The average lifespan of a human is 72 years. People still die in their 40s, 30s, 20s, and even younger. No one knows how long they have. So truly, we should live every moment like it's our last. But how many do? How many people procrastinate their dreams? How many people procrastinate fixing their broken relationships? How many people procrastinate just working to be better? Society has gotten weak. When I was in college in 2017, everyone wanted to party, drink, do drugs, hook up, get their degree, get a nine to five job with a stable income, and that was it. For some people that life seemed fine. For me and my three friends, it was not part of the plan. One of those friends had more drive than anyone in the group. He was 18 but had the mind of a mature 30 or 40 year old man. His name was Joseph. Now before I tell you about Joseph and how we met, I need to tell you about where I was in life before I met him. Yes, my story. Not gonna tell you all of it, just a little bit. It was 2016. I was in community college, obsessed with fitness. My cousin had introduced me to the gym and after gaining a little bit of muscle, my social awkward self gained a little bit of confidence. I started watching YouTubers like Christian Guzman, Max Tuning, Bart Kwan, wanting to be like these guys. I even started a fitness YouTube channel to document my progress. But I came to learn I did not enjoy bodybuilding. The sheer amount of food you had to eat <laughs> was too much for me. Maybe I didn't have the work ethic. Maybe I just didn't enjoy it. But my 138 pound self switched to powerlifting. The problem was I was all alone. None of my college friends had the same passion as I did for lifting. And none had the same passion for creating YouTube content. So I went on Instagram, did some digging, and I found a local brand by the name of Raptor Fitness. They had fitness clothing, fitness content. They had a YouTube channel. So I direct messaged these guys. I wanted to collaborate. I talked back and forth with one of the owners named Juan. We both watched the same YouTubers, had similar goals, and Juan was just cool enough to ask me to come work out with him. And I made a vlog out of it. From the first time meeting Juan, we became friends instantly. He introduced me to the other owner of the page, Colin. Colin was a waiter at the time, but he was also working on the Raptor Fitness clothing and Instagram page. Juan and Colin had been friends since elementary school. But somehow when I met them, it was like I had known them my whole life. The next time we were going to link up, we planned to all work out together and film a video. And this is where I met Joseph. Now Juan had met him first and brought him along to the gym for the video. Now, I thought it'd be fitting 
to discuss the first time I met Joseph with the man himself, Juan Boyo. You said eight? We can just talk. Alright All right, guys, I'm here with Juan Boyo. Man. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta start off better. This is right. gonna reintroduce this, bro. Alright guys, I'm All here right. with Juan Boyo. Um haven't seen this guy in a long time. You're a dad now. Yeah, sure. I am so dad. like what is dad life like? Dad life's been pretty good. Um, getting used to it, mm. getting used to being a dad, getting used to being a father, you know, it's a whole lot different. It's like a, you just get slapped with like a whole bunch of responsibility yeah. all at once. It's like responsibility times like a thousand, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. It's like that, yeah. Definitely like, change, it's definitely a different lifestyle. What if, bro, if, if, if you allow it, I'm going to put up a picture of your baby in yeah, the video no, yeah, just yeah, to yeah, show yeah. how cute he is. All right. Yeah. Um, Make it the make it take a picture with him and then put yeah, that no, one in. Yeah. <laughs> the him. thumbnail, yeah. yeah. Um, the thumbnail is probably gonna be Joseph. So that I'm I'm gonna go into it now. Um, you've probably seen the the past footage. Um, the this documentary is about Joseph. I mm -hmm. I sent you the some of the footage. Yeah. Um, so I I met him through you, mm -hmm. and I kind of want to relive like how you met him for the first time like yeah we were in that time in our lives where we were like we're still young but like yeah we were really young back then. we were like <laughs> i feel like we were overly ambitious and like yeah. we thought we could do shit yeah without with but we didn't really i think if we're being honest like me you and colin yeah we didn't really have the work ethic like jojo had it yeah, yeah and we were passionate but he was like on another yeah, level yeah, yeah. He had that, he yeah. had that business mentality just yeah. implemented real good. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, he, he knew how to take it that way, that step further. For yeah. sure, yeah. So when you met him, like, talk about that, like, it was at the GNC, like, what happened? Like, how did you, you know, Uh, like, So, I mean, I used to work at Bricks, which is like a restaurant. It's pizza. in a shopping center off of, like, Rare Road. And uh, I would always just go to my supplements down like in the same shopping center, I would always walk over and see Jojo right there. Yeah. And like, I, I mean, I saw him a couple times. I was probably like 20. He was still in high school. I think he was like- 18. Yeah, yeah he was like 18 yeah. or maybe 17, I think still. I think he was still maybe 17, not even 18 yet. And um, yeah, yeah, he was working at GNC and uh, he was telling me how he was, he would always tell me about, show me the, these papers and all this stuff. But I would go in there and we'd just, you know, kind of just start talking about supplements at times. So you went in multiple times. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I went in multiple times. He'd always come yeah. up to me and he would always be like, hey, like, why are you, you know, what are you exactly are you looking for? Can I help you? Stuff like that. Like, he'd always, you know, just, you know, he'd really want to help out. And he, he always, you know, he he was the kind of worker that actually kind of would know what he was talking about, too. Yeah. Like, he, he made sure he studied what he was talking about. Yeah, because you um, go into GNC, like, yeah, and this is, most guys, guys yeah, 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 he, yeah. like, he, and, yeah. like, sometimes if you were to know something, he'd just, like, would ask you questions, like, oh, like, because I would always go in there and get, like, vegan protein, mm. and then he'd be like, so why are you getting vegan protein, like, you know, he's always, like, curious, always mm. wanting to, you know, kind of, you know, learn yeah. something, you know what I'm saying, so that's, that's one thing that I really saw about him, and then we just, or that I noticed about him, and then, um, what happened after that, I think... Yeah, we just started talking, just getting, a, like, you know, getting along more. Yeah. And then he started, uh, we started talking about lifting, and he didn't do powerlifting. He did bodybuilding more. So, like, he was a complete, like, like stranger, like, to powerlifting. And then, like, he, like, to him it was crazy that there's, like, these dudes that don't even look like they're big yeah. or ripped. And they can, like, lift, like, all this crazy amount of weight. Yeah. So, as soon as he saw, like, I would show him videos. And then when I was in GNC, like, we were talking, and I would show him videos of, like, like Power Raptor Fitness and how we were lifting and like mm. all these other dudes that were lifting too, mm. like that one, you know, say that one kid yeah, that'd Justin, be like Justin Bonaparte. Yeah, 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 that kid. Like videos yeah. of him. I show him, yeah. he'd just be like, he would just be like, what the, f you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't know, are you allowed to cuss? Yeah, go ahead. I'll bleep it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he'd just be like, you know, WTF. Yeah. He would just be like, oh, that's crazy, you know this stuff. So then yeah. I would just, you know, I'd put him on like all these powerlifting videos and like after that he just got like he's just like yo we should get a. 
he was just talking about like lifting and stuff and like getting a workout in. And I was like, yeah, let's let's get a workout in. Like, let's do it soon. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm with Colin. And we had that whole Raptor Fitness thing going on yeah. at the time. So I was just like, yeah, like we should, you know, link up sometime, go to the gym. We know a good gym, Carolina yeah. Fitness. Shout out Carolina Fitness. Oh, yeah. We're actually shit. going. I'm gonna film with Colin. We're gonna be there. Oh, for real? Yeah. You're gonna film it over yeah. there? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh. Oh, I also showed showed him videos of Carolina Fitness, and mm-hmm. he was just like, "Yo, that's crazy!" Like, cause he was watching. Who was he watching? He was watching that one YouTuber. That one like uh the like, guy that was in jail before. Michael like, Sheed. Huh? My, Michael yeah, Sheed yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. and uh, I think he was doing like all these like. You know, old school. He would go to like old school yeah. war gyms C- and stuff or like that. C.T. Fletcher too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. he he like he really liked that old school style. When I showed him Carolina Fitness, like on these videos, he'd be like, yeah. "Where?" He's like, "Yo, where's that yeah. gym at?" So I was like, "Yo, let's get a workout at this gym. Let's plan it out." And then yeah, after that, like he was just yeah. he was just excited to come through. Like he was just you know we just had that connection immediately. Yeah. And yeah, he was like uh, he was on like his last semester of high school. Like I think he was gonna. He told me he was gonna take a break for. Uh, from college he was gonna take like a semester off or something like that to really know what he wanted to do and you know never went back yeah yeah, yeah he he, yeah. he ended up going back i think for like the semester oh, like really? once he took that one semester break off oh like, yeah, he, after, did, yeah. he went back yeah. and then he like he, he took like he, he would tell me like yo like this is not for me like mm. you know what i'm saying like you just yeah. like i want more you know what i'm saying like yeah. he that's when he, i guess he started really realizing like, yo, he, he mm. really wants like he, he just knew he didn't want to you know just be like I guess work average, yeah, yeah, like you know, we're that nine to five yeah. average. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like he did, he like that's when he really realized, and that's good for him that he went and he tried it, and yeah. that's when he really realized, yo, like mm. I want to, you know, he had that millionaire mentality yeah. that Mike, you know, Rashid, you know, that yeah. he had just that mentality in yeah. his head, and he would tell me that he was like, yeah, I'm not coming back, and I was like, it's, it's a, you know what I'm saying? Like we're just mm. like, yo, chase yeah. your dreams, you feel me? Yeah. So, um, yeah, he, yeah, that's that was that. That's how we met, and then the first time, I think this first time or second time we went to the gym that's when you came and that's yeah. and then me and jojo were like i was like i told jojo i was like yo we're all gonna work out again at carolina fitness yeah. and i think that's where i think you hit me up around the same time yeah like yeah, randomly I, you just I remember me you messaged me like after we met you were messaging me like because we were setting up a collab with colin mm-hmm. and then you were sending me jojo's profile you're like yo i met this guy and yeah you kept hyping him up, and I didn't really... I don't think I paid it any mind. Yeah. And then when I met him, and we talked about this before, like, <laughs> when I met him, I kind of judged the book by his cover. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just this jack dude, and, like... <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. He wasn't, like, giving me the time of day, like... He was, like, kind of coming off... Um, how, how do you say this, like... Like, not friendly. But I yeah. can understand why. Cause Very some, serious. Yeah, some people yeah, are yeah, like yeah. that. Uh, so I was like, man, this guy. Like, I was just judging. I was like, man, yeah, this yeah. guy thinks he's like this. this yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Uh, Exactly. Yeah. But, but then, like, during that workout, and I still thought this after the workout, but mm-hmm. he proved me wrong during the workout because mm-hmm. I was going for a bench PR. Mm-hmm. And he was pushing me. He was like, yo, you can get this, like. Yes, and that's he, nothing about him, bro. He made always. me do a weight that I didn't think I could do. Dude, yep. Yeah, like, he always wanted to push yeah. it to the limits, man. Yeah. Every time we worked out, he always wanted to push it to the limits. And that was his first time meeting me. He doesn't even yeah. know who I am. He doesn't, yeah, and exactly. He's pushing me, like... And remember, he would always yeah. tell, he's like, yo, man, if you, like, gain weight, you got the body type. Remember how yeah, he was always yeah. pushing you? Yeah. Always trying to motivate you? Like, yeah, always, yeah. you know, putting that, you know, positivity inside your brain. And then, but I didn't really truly know him till we all started hanging out. Yeah. Because I think we just had similar goals and... Yeah. Um, we all watch like the same YouTubers, YouTubers, and, all and that. Put each other on on yeah. different things. Like we were all just you know, and then really focused at that time. I think he just enjoyed the, because we had like the the deadlift parties and like all. Oh that. yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, you could just see like he enjoyed it, and then he got hooked. Yeah, yeah. he got hooked. Yeah, I mean yeah. he was passionate already about fitness. Right. Yeah. And he had you know now he's like with this group of yeah. us. You know what I'm saying? It, it was like made yeah, it more. made him more. Yeah, he just. On and then with, level. with me, I was I was doing content too. Yeah. And I just noticed, like, he would get excited with me because, like, and then he started falling in love with, like, the video side of it. Yeah. And editing. Yeah. And, editing and all that, yeah. And I was like, man, this guy is, like, just really obsessed with it. Then we started going yeah. to, like, Fitness Connection, right? Fitness Connection. That's really, like, he's, like, yeah. where all his other friends were at and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I want to talk to some of them, too. But, like, you you know what happened with, like, his his seizure and then eventually you know uh it sucks but you know he passed away like 
how how did that affect you like um yeah. i mean i honestly i i couldn't really i couldn't really believe it because i think when i got i think alexandria texted me and i was at work and she told me that he was in the he was in the hospital and they did like emergency surgery or something like that like they did yeah. Someone like I think it was like his liver or something. Some like I forgot exactly what she was telling me, but I remember I was working. I couldn't believe it. I was just kind of like, all right, like everything's gonna be fine. It's the surgery. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like to me, I was just thinking positive. Like yo, it's gonna be good. Yeah. It's gonna. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna see JoJo soon. You know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. just you know. Yeah. So I was just I was just I was worried. I was super worried, but like I was just you know trying to have that faith of like you know this is gonna everything's gonna go. Right, because he yeah. was JoJo. I was just like, yo, this dude's like yeah. Superman. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. he's, yeah, so I was just kind of like, yo, he's going to get through it. And then, um, then I think later on is when they texted me um, that they were, the, later on, I forgot where I was. I think I was going to my cousin's when they texted me that they, that he finally passed. Yeah, yeah, and then, but man, mm. I was, I was just breaking down because mm. when it happened, I did, yeah, I did. I remember I was with Megan and I broke down because mm. like I know him, Jojo, for like I've seen him come up, you know, to owning his own gym, you know, mm. really being focused on his goals, and you know, mm. he really achieved everything he yeah. said he was going to achieve, and I knew he just had so much more. And we kind of so, saw him from like after kid, he man. had the seizure. <laughs> yeah, he you. I personally, me and Colin, and I think yourself talked to him, and even like guys like David and Matt, yeah. and Jason, like they talked to him and they saw like how down he was from the seizure. Like the, you, I think I could see like he was taking the medication, and he was like, he would text me like he was really depressed, and then that didn't stop him from like yeah, it's true. chasing his because he didn't have the yes. gym at that point yeah he had that he, he did have that he, one year after yeah. the first time where he was he, just so you know what i'm saying he's sad and then yeah that didn't stop him he picked himself he picked up him, yeah. and then just went to another level you know he's like exactly in, in terms of business and like self-improvement yeah when i when i started training with him like last year i just saw a different him talk about like a moment in your life like people like like Instagram is really fake. Like, people will see like, oh, this guy has a gym. He's like, jacked. But they don't understand like, you went through ups and downs. Like well, when I was nineteen, I did a powerlifting meet, and about a month after the powerlifting meet, I had a brain hemorrhage. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, was basically when you have a blood vessel it pops. Fifty mm-hmm. percent of people die. Out of the fifty percent that survive, over eighty percent end up paralyzed or yeah. messed up. Yeah. I'm not paralyzed or dead. Yeah. But whenever mm-hmm. I got out of the hospital, at the time too, I just got certified. I had a job lined up at a gym. Mm-hmm. This is what something people don't know. Yeah. I was gonna work at a gym. Oh, where? Yeah, yeah I didn't even know that. It didn't happen yeah. because, um, long story short, I had the brain hemorrhage. It happened in a certain part of my brain called the temporal lobe. Mm-hmm. Activity in the brain in that area can cause seizures. I had a mm-hmm. seizure. If you have a seizure, you can't drive your car for six months. Yeah. So that happened to me. And my first client that I trained. I was like messed up like mm. I put a, a post on Instagram and I was like hey I'm looking for like six week coaching somebody come in I had a old friend from high school named Zach mm. and he wanted to change his change his, yeah. change his physique and he had already lost a whole bunch of weight but he needed to get to the end mm. so I trained him for six weeks I made his program with like a messed up brain like mm. during that time for example it was near Christmas we were building gingerbread houses and yeah. like my brain got tired making a gingerbread house like i couldn't Damn. understand yeah it didn't make sense to me you yeah. know so i made this program one day when i had like some some mental energy some mental strength mm. i swear i made this program in like 45 50 minutes and i passed out for like 18 hours like i yeah. woke up like um the next day yeah. like the whole day passed i thought i just took a nap mm. and um that just goes to show like how weak my mind was but i got yeah. the program made and long story short, my first client got a transformation and everything mm-hmm. from there. One turned to three, three turned to eight. Yeah. And then now I'm here. So people don't yeah. know that. Like people think yeah. that I was just like, I'm just like elite. Oh, he like, I just like had the boss yeah. to start a business. I was forced to start my business mm-hmm. I, because I wanted to start at a gym and learn the ropes. Yeah. I had to go out of my way and get books about sales. I had mm-hmm. to go out of my way and get books about marketing. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just, you got to do everything yourself. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't have a gym to teach me. This is how you sell personal training. Mm-hmm. This is how you grow your business. You know, everything that I did, yeah. I kind of had to do it on my own. Like, I had to hustle my way mm-hmm. to where I'm at now. Like, how can I separate yeah. myself from these people 
you know, mm-hmm. and that's what people, like, people yeah. think I, like, it was just easy and it wasn't easy, mm-hmm. you know, like, I almost lost my life and yeah. I still was fighting. I was like, nah, this is what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Do you think me. that's what, like, motivated you even more when you came out of that? You're like, oh, shit, like, I could have died, like, I need to, I need to work, like, as hard as possible. You think that motivated you or? Yeah, it definitely yeah. motivated me. Mm-hmm. So, like... Because yeah. whenever that happens to you, like, you don't play about your grind. Mm-hmm. Like, every day is, this is, might be my last day. And I know it sounds cliche, but I really yeah. live my life that way. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that I'm always up. It doesn't mean that I'm always progressing. Yeah. Like, sometimes I'm doing good, and then I dip. I'm not a perfect yeah. person. But um, definitely all mm-hmm. of that made me stronger. Yeah, because I remember you yeah. said he was even, he felt really weak during that time. He said yeah. he could barely even build like a gingerbread home or something, a yeah. gingerbread yeah. house. He said it took so much energy yeah. just to build that gingerbread house. And I'm like, exactly. to go from that to like, you know, now he's like yeah. back on his, you know, grind and, yeah. you know, he has his opening of a gym. It's like, yeah. he, he never let anything put him down, man. So it was mm. just, he was just, he was a different breed for sure. Like, how did that, like his, when he passed, like, how did it affect your life? Like, how did you start to value, like, time more? Because he passed at, like, a young age. So, like... He did pass at a young age. I think age. we all just thought about it, like, yo, like, we don't know when we're going to go, like... Exactly. You really don't know, yeah, yeah what what could happen. And it gets to maybe, you know... To me, it's just... You have a kid now, too, so it's like... Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. have a kid, so it's just more just, like... I've... Nah, I mean, I have a high road now, so I, you know... My condolences to the family... You know, I just, it's just losing a, a son, you know, it's probably mm-hmm. one of the, you know, it's heartbreaking. So it's just how it changed my view of life. I, I just, to me, I just, whenever I, I get, you know, whenever I'm working out or I feel like not working out mm-hmm. or, you know, not getting these push-ups in there yeah. for the day or something like that, like, I just, you know, one person that I always, you know, I always think about is Jojo. Like, he still, mm-hmm. he still motivates all of us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we still talk about him, we still, yeah. you know. We still want to get, you know, back on the ground because of yeah. JoJo. Like, I feel like JoJo, you know, he made a positive impact on not just our lives, but, you know, a lot of people's lives. Yeah. So, to me, it's like, he, I mean, he's going to be remembered for yeah. sure. He's, he's, I mean, I'm going to remember him for the rest of my life for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm, I've known, yeah, I've known him since he was like, you know, it's crazy because, like, I saw him when he was, like, you know, finishing up high school to, like, you know what I'm saying? So, it's kind of mm-hmm. like, I just saw yeah. him, like, grow. And he was, you know, just focused. Yeah. And it's like for some people that that elevation of like from a kid to like a businessman and like it it takes years. For him it was like it happened quick because he was just so determined. Yes, he was extremely yeah. determined. He didn't let anything get in his way, he didn't let yeah. girls get in his way. Yeah. Yo, he you know, that's yeah. probably one yeah. of the biggest tests. Yeah. yeah, that's probably one of the biggest things that, you know, really has, you know, roadblocks for a lot of us guys. Yeah. You know, like at that age, yeah. like 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 nineteen and like twenty two, twenty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like where I were. And he's a good like a, he's a he was a good looking guy, like yeah. above average. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we we saw like girls like yeah throw themselves at him, and he didn't like. Fold. Yeah, he was just yeah he didn't fold yeah. at all. He was just fold. He just knew what he wanted. Yeah. He he really knew what he wanted in life, and that's yeah. that's that's crazy because you know most guys you know they would yeah. he would just chase oh. the girl like if you know yeah. if you have these girls that are you know trying to come after you know yeah. you would you know chase after them too you know you go after yeah. him but he he didn't fall he didn't chase these hoes he didn't do any of that he didn't he wasn't really like you know addicted to drugs he didn't let any of yeah. that you know what i'm saying like you just straight up just yeah. keep going you know what I'm saying? Just... so like what would you say to somebody like who's who's young and they think they have like their whole life ahead of them like... i have a lot of uh, you know to really get to where you want to get in life you know whatever goals you have it's going to take a lot of discipline for sure and that's what jojo always preached too was you know discipline if you you know you're not gonna enjoy you might there's might be days where you don't enjoy what you're doing to get where you want to be but you just it's just about it all comes down to discipline yeah like you just gotta do it every day no matter what and he that's he was you know he breached that a lot he i think he said he had the post-it notes or something where he was like writing like Every yeah. single day, so just kind of like yeah, you just got like discipline is probably mm-hmm. one of the biggest things you need to get what you want in yeah. life. Yeah, I think he had that tattooed on. He did. He did have it on discipline, consistency, and something else. Yeah. Yeah. So 
But yeah, yeah, I mean, discipline is key for what you want. Yeah, it's crazy. Because, like, you, you gotta say this, but you can't, you know. Nah, oh, man. I appreciate your time um, talking about this. Alright, I'm gonna cut it down. <laughs> Bad thoughts and good thoughts are both temporary. I'd be lying to you if I said it's just positivity all day. Outwardly it is, but inwardly I go through some stuff, and as soon as those negative times hit, I gotta fight it right away. And the way I do that is by embracing suffering instead of uh, the anxiety of like sometimes I'll get in my head and say, you know, you can die tomorrow, but anybody can. But the fact that I have today, instead of fighting that feeling, I embrace it and welcome it. And, uh, yeah. One of the things I practice daily is um, accepting death and not running away from it. And I would like to, when I die, knowing that I live. It's kind of tough to live when you're afraid of dying.